The biggest problem with double sequential defibrillation is that despite all those publications, many clinicians still don't know what the hell this thing is, how to actually do it and will they be pressed for performing this procedure or simply get sucked. So today we will explain this weird idea of using two defibrillators on one patient and explore the latest guidelines to help you make an informed decision. Because you know, it sounds good, but maybe two, it's simply too much. My name is Alex Hepner. Oi, my name is Alex Hepner. And this is group call. And this is group call. As for May 2023, both American Heart Association and European Resuscitation Council do not support routine use of double defibrillation outside of the research environment. So why should you be even bothered with this topic? Because just a couple of weeks ago, something unexpected happened. The International Liaison Committee on Resuscitation unexpectedly changed its recommendation from we suggest against routine use of double sequential defibrillation strategy to we suggest that a double sequential defibrillation strategy may be considered. This statement is a huge game changer. Please remember that both American and European guidelines are strongly linked to ILCOR, so very soon your clinical practice may significantly change and you may be using two defibrillators instead of one. Yes, two defibrillators on one patient. This concept was presented for the first time by Dr. Hodge and his team in 1994. They used two defibrillators uh, set for 360 joules and two different parts positioning to successfully treat a patient who was in refractory VF. It sounds a bit like a mad scientist idea straight from Frankenstein or oh, a brain that wouldn't die. A cool movie, by the way, but actually makes sense. And to show you why it makes sense, I'm taking you down to the woods. Let's say you need to cut off the branch. You could do it with one saw, but it will take time and a large number of moves. Things may go faster if you will use two saws from different directions. This is a very simplified version of what happens during double defibrillation. The branch represents a VF. One full move or a saw is your biphasic shock. Use of two saws from different directions mirrors the mechanism of vector change, so placing the second set of parts in a different positioning. Cool, but if this method is so effective, why don't we use it on every VF? Good question. Well, because unfortunately only 18% of energy from the fibrillation goes to the myocardium. 82% goes to lungs and muscles, so there is a huge risk of creating of iatrogenic complications. Therefore, double defibrillation should be used only in special circumstances where benefit outweighs the risk. Most likely that's why the idea of double defibrillation has been abandoned up to 2015 where Dr. Lebeck published her case study of a 40-year-old male who was brought back to life with a double shock after seven unsuccessful single defibrillations. This publication triggered more and more new case studies and different variations of double sequential defibrillation and subsequently chaos in terminology. In literature you can find double defibrillation, double external defibrillation, uh, double sequential defibrillation or even dual simultaneous defibrillation. There is an amazing publication by Dr. Hamilton which sums up and puts kind of a structure on this mess. Anyway, from all those publications, the most important one is Defibrillation Strategies for Refractory Ventricular Fibrillation by Dr. Cheskis, who actually conducted the randomized controlled trial enrolling 405 patients. Findings from this trial were so convincing that Ilcor decided to change their recommendation. The technique described by Dr. Cheskis most likely will be the technique you will use in field, guys, so pay attention. The first set of parts should be applied in a classic anterolateral uh, configuration and a second set of uh, defibrillation parts in the anterior-posterior configuration. To ensure that shocks are not administered at the exact same moment, operator should apply a short, less than one second delay. Okay, so can we open champagne now? Not really, 
As for today, the vast majority of defibrillators may not be ready for double shocking. Although Dr. Chesky states that double defibrillation is equipment friendly and Dr. Drennan seems to confirm minimal risk to the equipment, there is really interesting publication from Dr. Lannan pointing out that there are small differences in each device's type of biphasic waveform which may affect the procedure. And last but not least, as dual defibrillation remains off-label use of the defibrillator, it poses challenges not only in terms of war warranty, but eventual legal liability. There's one more thing. Dr. Ramsey pointed out that the use of two sets of parts, especially in smaller patients, creates a risk of an electric arch. It is manufacturer dependent, but please remember that usually minimum separation between parts is four centimeters. Is double defibrillation a double trouble then? I wouldn't say so. Majority of research papers and case studies seem to prove that this double shock plus change of vector actually makes sense and as Dr. Kumar noticed, at the moment the biggest challenge is lack of standardization and consistency in using this technique in the research environment. Obviously, there's also a pharmacological factor like doses and types of medications used in arrest, which was pointed out by Dr. Simon, but it's a material for a completely different video. Before I will record it, you may want to watch this one. My name is Alex Hepner and this was Group Call.